The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by Tenet Controls. And by HDA Model Works, suppliers of scale model lighting products, detail parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelWorks.com today. Hello again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome to a brand new build series here on the TrekWorks YouTube channel. Well you can see today we've got the 1350 scale Star Trek Klingon Katinga class. Uh, Klingon cruiser from Star Trek the Motion Picture. This uh, kit was put out just this last year from Polar Lights. A lot of the uh, Star Trek fans and Star Trek modelers have been waiting for this kit for a long time. I hope it's uh, the first in a lot of new 1350 scale releases for Star Trek. Star Trek ships. Hopefully we'll get maybe the Reliant next, which is another really uh, popular subject with Star Trek modelers. But here we have the Klingon Katinga. I'm really excited to finally get started on this one. I've had this kit uh, for probably a couple of months now. Just want to mention that this uh, build-up is being sponsored by my good friend Jerry at HTA Model Works. Jerry has uh, helped me out a lot over the years here on the channel, and uh, he's helping us out again. He sent us a bunch of uh, nice... Uh, well, he sent me the kit itself, and then he sent me a nice set of uh, photo etch uh, aftermarket parts for this, for the uh, detailing out the shuttle bay in the back of the ship, which we actually never saw in the uh, movie or anything, but I think it'll be kind of cool to uh, do all that detailing in there. Other than that, I'm going to be building this um, pretty much straight out of the box. I've got the Tenet Controls um, weapons light-up effects for it, and uh, we'll be incorporating that into the build, but... Uh, other than that, pretty much straight out of the box. I plan on doing most of the painting, uh, just using regular masking tape and all that, and um, we'll try to come up with some colors. Now, um, it's been kind of controversial as far as in the modeling community about all these uh, different colors that are on this uh, model. Uh, a lot of people say that it didn't look like that, you know, look quite that bold in the uh, uh, as it appeared in the film. Well, that's kind of always the case with. Uh, you know, studio models versus, you know, how they look in a regular room with regular lighting versus how they're lit on the screen. And, uh, you know, keep in mind they use a lot of filters and special lighting and hired professionals to work with both the film and the lighting itself to make the models appear differently than they do in actual reality. So I have no doubt that a lot of this uh, paint detail was probably on this model. In fact, you can uh, reference a lot of uh, pictures online of the actual studio model both when it appeared in this version and later on when it became the uh, ship that we saw in uh, uh, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, which uh, that one's a really cool looking ship as well. Um, I think they call it the Kronos One, but um, we're going to build it as the Star Trek The Motion Picture version, and I'm going to um, keep my paintwork kind of subtle on this. I'm going to use a lot of these colors, but I'm going to try to uh, uh, dull them down a little bit, if you will. Uh, maybe go to one slightly... Uh, a, a shade of each of these colors slightly darker than it's uh, being called out on the color callouts, and maybe that'll work. And then, of course, we're going to do a bunch of weathering on it and uh, a wash and everything, and that's going to tone everything down quite a bit. But uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, get the camera a little bit closer here. We'll open up the box, and I'm going to talk about what the uh, build plan is for this. We're going to start off uh, basically first here with the uh, you know the the uh, basic assembly of the parts. And then as you go along, you got a plan for lighting. Now, the kit was designed to work with the uh, 
uh, factory produced uh, lighting kit which is available from Polar Lights. You'll see if you buy one of these kits they have some information about it on the box. But we're going to be doing our own lighting. I usually do that. Um, I've got LED tape and some other things. Uh, I've noticed on a few of the builds that I've seen of this ship on YouTube that uh, people are having a lot of trouble getting enough lighting here at the front end of the model uh, where the lights don't look very bright or you know only in low light do they show up. So I'm going to really look at that and make sure I get that uh, worked out properly because I'm not going to use the photo etch. Uh, there's a photo etch detail set that you can use for the front end and all that. But I'm going to use all the kit supply parts just to try to show uh, modelers out there that, you know, uh, maybe taking a little different approach to that. We can, we can make that work and, and look a lot better. So we'll try to figure that out. I'm hoping that I can do that with some LED tape and some carefully mounted LEDs and things like that. But we'll just see how it goes. We may... We may succeed and we may fail, but we'll uh, we'll try either way. So let me get the camera repositioned here in a better spot so I can tip the box over and we can uh, lay it flat on the bench here and we'll open it up and start taking a look at all the stuff that we're going to be doing and some of the aftermarket parts. Be right back with that. Okay, we're back with you with a better camera angle and let's go ahead and look inside the kit and uh, talk about what we're going to be working with on this model. Um, I'm not going to do a full-on uh, kit review on this because there's several of these already on YouTube, you know, talking about the instructions and the assembly and all that. So let's just move right into what we're going to be working with. I've got this uh, Tenet Controls lighting setup, as I mentioned. This is a really nice kit from Ralph there. Uh, it gives the weapon sounds and light-up effects for the forward and rear torpedo launcher. So we'll be working that into the model. There's a control board here. Uh, there's some, uh, you know, included LEDs and... Uh, all the stuff you need to make that work. There's a speaker included also that can fit inside the uh, kit supplied dome base which we're going to be using at first. We may uh, upgrade that a little bit later on but just to have a platform to build up the model and we're going to use that to start with here. Uh, here are the decals. Decals look pretty good. I think these colors are a little bit bright for some of these uh, details here but they're going to get weathered down quite a bit and uh, a wash done over them and things like that so it'll, I think they'll look pretty good in the end. Um, here is the uh, Paragraphics Photo Etch set for this. This is the uh, shuttle bay detail for the rear part of the ship and there's also some discs included here that I'll get a little bit closer so that you can see uh, for detailing out the, the uh, forward and rear uh, torpedo launcher to give that kind of individual you know, emitter look so we'll be working with that but mainly uh, the only photo etch going on the model is going to be inside the shuttle bay. We may even come up with some uh, Klingon type shuttles for this. We'll have to wait and see, but for now we're just going to you know, work with what we have here. But uh, going forward with the model here, we've got all the instructions from Tenant Controls and HDA Model Works. Um, I believe there's also a set of decals for the... Uh, if they're in here, I'm not, I can't remember. I haven't looked at this stuff in a while. Uh, some decals for the... Um, uh, yeah, there's some decals here. Let me see if I can open this really quick for you guys. Um, for the uh, interior detail on the shuttle bay that's going to save us a lot of paint work, which is always nice. Let's have a look at these real quick. Jerry's got his instructions here. Those of you out there who have used uh, Jerry's decals before, you'll, you'll know that they're always uh, really nice, high quality, laser printed. Yeah, these are gorgeous. Look at that, guys. Look at the detail on the floor. Klingon logo there and everything. And these are designed to fit right on top of the uh, photo etch parts. And so we'll be working with that. Uh, moving along here, let's see, we've got uh, the instructions for the tenant controls. As usual, Ralph there does a really good job uh, making really simple and under easy to understand uh, drawings and schematics. And also, he's always just a phone call away if you have any problems setting his stuff up. So we'll be uh, going through that whole process. But uh, just going through the racks of parts here, there are several racks. You can see, just to give you an idea, a little bit of the size of the model here. Here's the uh, forward section. Um, all in all, this will be a really nice companion to go with the uh, 1350 scale refit. But uh, we're going to start off by building the forward section. I call it the onion bulb. We're going to start off with that area first. So here's the base. I'm going to be working with that. And here's the main uh, wing assembly for the rear half of the model. You can see this is really a nice size. And there's uh, really beautiful work that they did here engraving in all these uh, feather details. These ships are supposed to look like giant birds. And I'm really glad that this time around that they molded in this uh, wing uh, where it makes the turn right here. On the old 1537 kit, that was a separate part, so you always had a really bad 
gap issue right here that you had to deal with and of course you lost when you puttied it and everything you lost all this detail here on that uh, 1537 I built two of them a couple years ago I had to go in and hand sculpt all these uh, panels back here with a file and everything to get them back but uh, we don't have to worry about that on this kit so that's a really nice improvement and of course there's tons of paint work to be done on here these layers of uh, colors that go on as I mentioned uh, there's some masking sets available for this from three or four different uh, uh, companies but I'm going to try to uh, do most of the masking on this myself. I mean, being that these panels are raised and you can see the lines really clearly and everything, even after it's primed and everything, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I'm going to just work with regular uh, masking tape, you know, the good quality painter's tape. And uh, I've done, you know, quite a, quite a bit of intricate masking using that method before, and it's always worked just fine, so hopefully it will this time. But if it doesn't work out, we'll go ahead and spring for some... Uh, some mask. We'll just have to see how that goes. But um, here's the bottom half of the uh, wing assembly. Again, more of that really nice uh, feather detail on here. And we'll finish off by showing you the main uh, engine nacelles. And these are nicely, nicely detailed as well. There's uh, the holes for all the lighting. As you can see, there's little pinpoints of light that we saw on this ship. Those are already been, you know, punched into the model, so we know exactly where they need to go. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm really glad to see is that the kit manufacturers are becoming aware that a lot of us uh, modelers that are into sci-fi and with all the modern tech that's available that they're uh, incorporating these the design of these kits to be lit from the very beginning including the fact that they molded in black which already helps us out with a lot of the light blocking that we need to do so I'm really glad that they're starting to move in that direction so that's a look at what we're going to be working with everybody this is a little bit of a short video to kick things off the follow-up video, which will be part two, will come back and uh, we're going to start actually doing the assembly. As I mentioned, we're going to work on the forward part first and I'll go through all the details of how I worked it all out. Maybe show you a little bit of the work going on in real time on the bench. And uh, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on uh, early on is getting the lighting, as I talked about in the forward part here, uh, to come through really nice using the kit supplied uh, glass that it comes with and everything. So. Hopefully we can make that work out and make this look good where you, if you look at it even in regular uh, room lighting, the, the lighting will show up like it's supposed to. So that's a wrap for this one, everybody. I hope you uh, will tune in and check out this ongoing build series. Back to a little bit of sci-fi here. I always, I always enjoy uh, doing some Star Trek models. Uh, a lot of the viewers of the channel have asked me why we haven't been doing a lot of the Star Trek stuff. It's kind of because that I've uh, built pretty much all the Star Trek kits that were out there, guys. We've... Uh, We've covered all the older kits. Um, it's good to see some new stuff coming out now. So as the new Star Trek stuff comes out, we'll definitely be working with it. Um, also, very shortly here, I'll be posting an update on the uh, big 72-inch Toss Enterprise that I'm working on. I've been doing a lot of boring work on it that you guys uh, really, really wouldn't be that interesting. Just mainly cutting out windows and drilling holes of all the, you know, a couple hundred viewports that are in the model. And that's just a lot of tedious drilling and filing and all that. But once we get beyond that, we'll start doing actual assembly on that model, and that's what will start getting really interesting. We're still developing some, uh, some developing developing some things for the kit with uh, uh, an, an internal armature, like I mentioned, and a few other things that need to be incorporated into that, so we can make sure when it's finished, it'll be a really sturdy and long-lasting model. But we'll get to all that. We'll cross all, cross all those bridges when we come to them. So until we see you next time, everybody, take care out there and happy modeling, everyone.